Welcome to the second part of the firework tutorial. We're going to pick up where we left off after the end of the first part and we're going to make the fireworks more spectacular. Now when my firework reaches its peak I want it to explode into fragments. Now, how do I know when it's reached its peak? Well, When it's traveling upwards it's traveling up at a speed of y velocity but as it gets slower and slower towards the top y velocity gets smaller and smaller until it hits zero at the top and then it starts going back down again. Well, I can't say when it equals zero because it might equal 0.1 or you know, it might skip the exact value of zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the y velocity is less than zero, so I know it's on its way down, so it's just reached the top, it's on its way down, if that's happened then I want to create fragments. And each fragment is going to be basically the same thing. It's going to be as if it's creating fireworks out of the firework. So let's assume it's going to fragment into eight parts. In here, when it reaches the top, I can repeat eight times and create more fireworks by launching fireworks from the top. And then when it's done that, it needs to delete itself because that firework can explode into all the others. It doesn't want to carry on going up. So I'm going to create another custom block called delete firework. And this is going to take an index as well because it's from a list. I want to know which firework I'm deleting. And this custom block was simply delete item index from each of the lists I'm using. So I'm going to do it for x and for y and for x velocity and for y velocity and for color using index for each of them so it's deleting the correct entry in the list. And that's y, x velocity, y velocity and color. So when it's created eight fragments it then wants to delete and the firework wants to delete is index the one that's been updating i'll put this code in here for after it's changed well after it's updated the position and the velocity if it's less than zero it's going to launch eight fireworks delete itself from the list and then it's going to stop not stop all that would be a very disappointing firework display it's going to stop this script because once it's deleted itself, it doesn't need to draw anything or update anything. That firework is done, but it has created eight new ones. So there's a few more things I need to do to make this work. When you consider it's launching eight fragments, it's launching them all from the bottom of the screen and it's launching them all upwards. We don't want the fragments to work like that. We want the fragments to launch from where the firework finished. And so we don't want them to fire up as quickly as the original firework did. So what we're going to do is create another entry called stage. And so when it, the firework starts, it will be stage rocket. When it fragments, it will be stage fragment. So I'll make another list. I'll call it stage for this sprite only. And I'll make sure I'm emptying the list at the beginning. And I'll make sure down here when I'm deleting the firework, let's just clean this code up a little bit. When I'm deleting the firework, I need to make sure I delete that entry as well. So delete stage. When I'm launching the firework, I need to know what stage of firework I'm launching. And also where from, as I said, the fragments come out from the firework, not from the ground. So let's edit this and we'll change it from launch firework to launch firework x colon, add an input x, add a label y colon, add an input y, add a label stage colon, and add an input stage. So what do I pass into stage? Well I could do a number, I could say when it's a rocket it's a number one, when it's a fragment it's a number two, and that would work, but it wouldn't be very readable code. What I'm going to do is create some more constant values. As you remember, I start constants with an underscore. These values don't change. 
and I'll call the first one stage rocket and then I'll make another variable and I'll call it stage fragment and I'll set these values up in initialize so I've got set stage rocket and set stage fragment and I'm going to set that to the values of one and two and so when I'm launching a firework the first firework well when I launch the firework I know it, it goes up at minus 180 no it doesn't sorry <laughs> at zero comma minus 180 where it was doing before and the stage instead of putting a number in here I can just drag in stage rocket and that makes the code so much easier to read than just using numbers there similarly where I'm launching these fragments out of the firework they're going to be launched from where that firework is which I know is at the x and y coordinates there so it's launching from where the firework is and it's launching them as fragments so let's have a look over here now so now I can see that it's x is the one passed in y is the value passed in I need to also make sure I'm storing the stage so after x and y I'll add the stage to the stage list now these are the values that are going to change slightly so I'll use an if else if the stage is a rocket so it's just taking off and again the code is easy to read because I'm using these variables if the stage is a rocket and then I want to set those values up as I did before but I'm going to add another if else I'm just going to copy this section if the stage is and I'll right click on that variable and change it to the fragment and I'll copy these list items down but I am going to change them a bit if it's a fragment I probably want it to have less horizontal difference in speed so I'll say minus 3.0 to 3.0 but again you can play around with these values yourself and I don't want them to set off at the same speed as the initial rocket set off I want them to set off generally upwards because gravity is pulling them down anyway so a minimum speed of zero going up and a maximum of 5.0 so nowhere near as fast as the original rocket but some velocity to make them go upwards and sideways and now I don't want them to be a random colour I want them to be the colour of the original rocket so to do that I'm going to have to add yet another variable to this so I'll add a label called color and I'll add an input called color and now I can pass in the color I want the rocket to be so when I start off I'll drag this random selection up here and the color it starts off at will be random between 1 and 200 I just separate the code out a little bit more there and in the firework code and I'm setting the color and I use that variable and I would do the same with this but is there any point in, in having if it's this and add that there add color to color if it's something else add color to color so either way it's adding color to color so I might as well move that up to the top of the code there so it's only doing it the once and over here I need to pass in the color of the fragments and it's the color that the firework already was and so I just pass in the variable color and that should create all the fragments with different velocities in the right color from the right position but there's one more thing to do I need another if else because I only want to create fragments from the rocket I don't want fragments creating fragments and then those fragments creating fragments or I'm just going to have millions of fragments and it's going to slow down to a ridiculously slow speed so in here we'll check we'll say if stage and I haven't actually set the stage yet since I added the list for it so we'll make a variable stage for this sprite only and where I'm setting up all these other variables I'll also set up stage and that will be 
item index of stage. So I can check now if the stage is stage rocket, that's when I need to do all this updating. But the work with pen, I need to do always. This is the code that only needs to be done for the rocket. I only need to check if it's at the top and blow it into eight different fragments if it's the actual rocket and not fragment. A fragment doesn't need to do anything special at the moment. So this looks like it's doing everything I need. Well, I notice here that I'm updating all the lists. I don't need to update the colour because once that's in the list, it's not changing. Similar with X velocity, once that's in the list, it's not changing. Y velocity changes because gravity affects it. X and Y position change because if I was flying off, I didn't need to update the other items. So should we see if this works? Let's make the window bigger again and run the code. It goes up and one firework comes down. Not as impressive as you might have expected, but remember, we're only updating on firework. So let's create another block. And this is going to be update fire update all fireworks. Again, run without screen refresh. I want this to happen very quickly. And update fireworks is going to go through all the fireworks and call update firework for each one. So we need an index variable, so I'll call i and we'll set i to 1 and we need to repeat for all of the fireworks but how many fireworks are there? Well we know that each firework adds an entry to the list so we just say there are in fact length of x fireworks. It could be length of y, it could be length of x velocity, they've all got the same number of entries and that is the number of fireworks. So we'll repeat that many times and each time we will update firework i. And then don't forget to change the value of i by 1. Now the only problem with this is that we are actually deleting fireworks sometimes. And so imagine we've got two fireworks and so we set i to 1 and we update firework 1. And we set i to 2 and we update firework 2. Now imagine firework 1 gets deleted. So we set it to 1, we update firework 1. It gets deleted, it gets removed from the list. So all the items that were at position 2 in the list are now at position 1 in the list. But then we're going to update firework 2. It's not there anymore. The way we get around this is to start at the end of the list and work backwards. So now we'll update Firework 2 and then if Firework 2 gets deleted it doesn't affect anything before it in the list. Firework 1 is still there. So working backwards through the list makes this system work. So all we need to do now is instead of just updating Firework 1 we'll update all the fireworks. And if we set that going Firework goes up and explodes and they all come down. Let's try again. Firework goes up and it explodes and they all come down. It's really quite nice. But shouldn't the fragments be a bit smaller than the main fireworks, seeing that they're all coming out of the main firework? I think so. And so where we're setting the pen size, instead of setting it down here, we'll set the pen size to 10 if it's a rocket and then we'll add a if else in here. I'll just copy this code. So if stage, and I'll right click on rocket to change the fragment. If it's a fragment, then I'll have a smaller pen size. If it's, a frag if it's going to be size 10 for the main rocket, I'll have maybe size 5 for each fragment. So set pen size. 
to five there. And now if I run the code, firework goes up and then smaller fireworks come off it. Again, firework goes up, smaller fragments come off it. So that's quite nice. One more little tweak we can make is if instead of putting the pen down and then straight back up here, if we put the pen down before we go to that x, y, what we need to set where we're drawing from. We're now instead of a dot, we're going to draw a line from wherever the pen is down before that to its current position. So back here, before I update the x and y positions, what I'm going to do is go to x, y. And I'll use the x and y coordinates. So what it's doing now, it's going to the position from the list before I've added the velocities, and then after the velocities have been added, it will travel to the new position. So the pen will go down at the old position, and then it will move to the new position before lifting the pen up. And this means that as when they're traveling faster, you get longer lines. So it's, it gives a nice effect. So instead of just being little dots all the time, you now have more of an impression of the speed. And that's a great place to leave part two of the firework tutorial. In part three, we're going to look at making the fireworks even more spectacular, bursting into a, a star of fireworks at the end of every fragment. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to the Rock Coder YouTube channel. And I'll see you next time.